experienced mundos invent the future mural in a whole new way through augmented reality. Open this web page on a computer or tablet, scan this QR code with your smartphone, look for the Instagram filter icon, click try it, and aim your Instagram camera at the artwork above. Don't forget to share. Inventing the future is about acknowledging the incredible inventions born from the genius of black Americans throughout the history of the United States. Marie Brown grew up in Jamaica, Queens, and when she realized 911 was a joke, she invented a home security system. Katherine Johnson was a mathematical genius who invented a formula for man to return home safely after a trip to the moon. What about Louis Latimer? He was 16 years old when he joined the U.S. Navy during the Civil War. He learned how inventions were patented and created a formula for the light bulb to be brighter. Now Philip B. Downing did his thing too. He invented what we now know as the mailbox. The legend Lonnie Johnson. He's in the Alabama Engineering Hall of Fame and his most famous invention is the Super Soaker. And lastly, my dude Garrett Morgan. He was the catalyst. He invented the gas mask and the three light traffic signal. These are your black history superheroes. So I finished a project that was pretty interesting and I honestly like for Black History Month, it was, it was awesome. Um, so back in December, uh, one of my one of my friends that I had on the podcast in Portland uh, for the PDX Black Rose podcast, which you should definitely check out, uh, they they hit me up and they were like, "Hey, we have this project that you know we want to explore some AR stuff and do it for Black History Month to tell you know stories about Black people that paved the way, essentially like Black inventors that that paved the way for us all." And I was like, "Dang!" Like they, they were like first are you interested in this like do you think this would be something you'd be interested in i was like heck yeah you know like for me that 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 is literally the embodiment of like all the stuff that i set out to do was really tell black stories about the black experience using emerging technology and so it's like this is something that like i was made for like i literally do this like this is me and so we were talking about it and we were talking about like okay accessibility all these different things what can we do and it's like we could do a lot of stuff with it and uh, because everything is done with digital tools, one of the things I've noticed about just working in the AR space, particularly just, you know, making stuff, it's that I approach AR as an animator. I use all the same tools for comics, for animation, for AR. I use all the same tools for, to make the content. And so what I, when I'm distributing something, you know, it could be a YouTube video. It could go into print. Or now it could go into AR and I don't have I could have it in the real world without having to compromise the the all the digital stuff that the wonders of digital technology. It it, it literally just works. And you know, because there are so many access points that we could have now with consumer friendly mobile AR, which are getting better, you know, because enterprise solutions just aren't going to be the thing, you know, to take AR to the next level. It's gonna be mobile solutions. And so we we started thinking about you know how can people access this stuff right they could they could do in a we could build an app have it on the app store android and ios uh, but we we're like eh, you know like that for the demographic that we're going for like that really isn't going to be a thing they have to download something and we have to get it through the app store and all that but we could do the social we could do the social ar so snapchat and we could do instagram and so we were working with the nonprofit sei and SEI is a, a nonprofit that called Self Enhancement Incorporated, one of the oldest like black owned nonprofit entities in Portland. And, you know, it, it, it just made sense for, for us to do something that had a broad reach. And so we narrowed it down to Instagram just because, you know, it's sort of Facebook and Instagram and their their big enterprise monopoly and and all these different things. But most of the people that they interface with, they they do all their promotion stuff through Instagram. So might as well add an AR experience to the stuff that they have. Right. So it's a no brainer. So from there, we 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 chose like a mural and that mural was one of the murals that uh, they did before. It was right next to Powell's. It's a huge, like 20 foot mural. And it's really just called Invent the Future. And it's talking about uh, black inventors that paved the way, or essentially uh, black superhero inventors. People that changed the black people that changed the world with their minds and, the, and their actions. And so I was like, bam, you know, superheroes. 
I started the Black Superheroes Matter Project, right? So superheroes, they are telling stories about black experiences. Perfect. And so then it was like, okay, we're going to go on Instagram. Spark AR, never used it before, but I had some friends, you know, I had a Stella C, I had, you know, the XR talk group that uh, that really helped me with that. Also, Nico Dont, you know, shout out to him because he's been helping me with a lot of, he helped me with a lot of stuff early on to just sort of approach this. But this, it, it became an interesting process because accessibility is always a problem. And when we're talking about accessibility, in order to make it more accessible, using a platform like that, you have to have a trade-off of creative stuff. You know, there's there's a, you don't get as much creative liberty when you're working with a pro, you know, a, a platform that is supposed to be reach broad reaching and stuff. And so, uh, one of the things that like really happened that I didn't anticipate was that yes you know learning the tools and everything for it was great right like i'm working on spark ar if we're looking at if we're looking at the actual spark ar features right you know you start it and you're able to play this experience and it's made up of so many different elements here that you could play around with and i ended up making a timeline for it and figuring out the whole timeline spot was was crazy. I mean, I've never been a I've never been a fan of nodes, but figuring out nodes and how those could work to create a timeline for something that only works in loops, and then having that work uh, for sequential images to tell a story was interesting. And you know, from there, I definitely had a lot of help just trying to learn this platform. And once I figured it out, it made sense. But then I ran into an interesting situation where. The simplest thing, literally image tracking, because we were, just, we were just trying to bring a mural to life about black superheroes, right? Bring a mural to life about black superheroes. The thing that happened was that we couldn't figure out what the image, to, like Facebook changed their algorithm. They changed the way that they render things and they updated the app and everything like a week before. And we were trying to figure out like why the image tracking wasn't working, the most basic thing possible. And so after beating my head against the wall and nobody could figure it out, I, I just had this idea at like two o'clock in the morning that, oh, what if we actually just, what if it was a rendering problem, right? I sort of tried to unpack all the different uh, templates that they had, nothing was working for my image target. And so I ended up figuring it out and it was actually just, you have to, you have to make the, the file size for these things so small that it will actually play and so the big limitation for this that i saw was that you really have to make sure that all these uh all the files are optimized because if they're not optimized then your experience isn't going to work and that's something i never really thought about as much with uh working in unity and stuff because you could compress it or whatever like as long as it's under 500 gigabytes or as long as it's under a gigabyte uh you should be good you should be good but with this stuff, you have to you have to approach it differently. And so not only did I have to approach the, the storytelling piece with this timeline that I had to build, but then I had to actually figure out a way to uh, optimize the assets and, 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 and layer things on in AR so that you have a seamless experience. And so working in this sort of platform, it was limiting, but it allowed me to, to create in a way that I, you know, I kind of, I kind of appreciate it. Kind of, kind of. And so from there, I we figured it out. I started doing testing and stuff, uh, got used to the workflow, and then I started. Then it became sort of this content piece. And so there was this thing that I that I did where I had one of the actual, uh, you know, people, Garrett Morgan. I had him uh, showing up at the end where he pops out the ground and he's in chains, and then he sort of hulks out of the chains and breaks the chains, and then he does like a Kai blast. And I, that was something I like frame by frame animated it. I did all the different things that I needed to do to uh, make sure that like that effect was pulled off. And then he just morphed into this sort of Power Ranger looking dude with like Kai Blast coming out of his hands. It was awesome. But when I show that to people, they were like, huh, uh, he wasn't a slave. He didn't do this, didn't do that. Like, I don't think this is something that you can do. And so we, we you know, we, we focused on the... Uh, the main characters and really staying true to those characters. Uh, interestingly enough, 
when we actually decided to and we finally got it finished we actually decided to send it to the app store for distribution or send it to a spark ar for distribution on the instagram thing and we kept getting denied and it kept saying it was a content issue you know it was always a content issue and you're getting uh unapproved because of a content issue and so i was like okay hmm you're saying it's a content issue but all we're doing is we're telling the stories of black inventors uh, that have paved the way for Americans that people don't know about. And we're doing that for Black History Month. And you're saying that there's an issue with content and that it's offensive or something like that. Offensive derogatory. And I, I, had, I felt some type of way about that because... For the year that we had in 2020, and then for us to have a project that's wholesome, it's educational, it's all those different things. And for that that response to be the rejection for a, for a platform that's supposed to be championing, you know, black creators and black creativity and making it more inclusive for, for us to express ourselves, I, I, I felt some type of way about that. And, and more importantly, it didn't, it didn't, explain or clarify like what they actually meant and so in my mind i'm like okay like something's off you know freaking proud boys right wing dudes over there freaking tripping and they're trying to keep black people down in in ar space like that's what i was thinking about and it's and i don't know i don't know what the answer was to that right and so come to find out right like you obviously you can't have super soakers in it obviously you can't reference nasa in it Obviously, you can't do, you know, can't have a lot of flashing lights uh, in those things. Those are sort of, those are creative choices. And those are things that really allow you to tell the stories uh, effectively. And uh, ultimately, we had to sort of retcon a lot of that stuff to just to get it passed. And uh, again, shout out to Estella, because like once like this project, like once this kind of came to a halt and we we're trying to get it out, you know, she rallied the troops and and that that's something that I really appreciate, particularly from her, because she's the one that like helped me get into the space. Like she helped me like get connected with everybody, all the people with the XR talk and over Twitter. She's connected all over the place. And I didn't realize that till like things just started happening. I was like, what? Like, this is wild. And so for me, I like I truly appreciate like the community that I was able to work with with this. And, you know, shout out to the Spark AR team, you know, and all the developers that helped me get it past, too, because it was it was something that, like, you know, this project would not have happened without a community. And the, the beauty of the work that I set out to do and, you know, what attracted me to this project is the fact that the whole point of this is to provide a reference point for underrepresented people that didn't see themselves existing or creating or even you know identifying with this type of technology like i taught a course on afrofuturism and the experience of that was that technology has been used to oppress people of color oppress black people oppress people that are caught in the margins and then they'll use the technology as an excuse afterwards to say oh yeah you guys don't meet you these metrics because you guys do x y and z it's like well the reason we're doing this is because y'all said that we can't do the things that y'all are doing and so we had to adapt to it and so now you're holding that against us been when you guys fabricated all this stuff and so it's like the idea that there's you no know, no black people in the space my whole thing is to literally have a mural on the side of a black owned building that that says something and then being able to take out your phone and shine it over it and have it come to life and then learn from that and then ultimately say oh man there's black people doing that and behind the hood there's black people that created that and so instead of me saying okay all i could do is just trade my body for for opportunities i can create things that have impact in the community and I could pave the way for myself and create a lasting legacy and also may also have my health 
you know like that's something that i've really been thinking about is you know i have arthritis and before i i had arthritis before i got into the age of 30 you know i had hip surgeries and all those different things and, and it's like okay was all that stuff worth it like yes i appreciate the opportunities and the connections and stuff that i did but did i have to do it this way and did i have to approach uh navigating that path so recklessly to where I felt like in order to approach it recklessly, that's the only way to be successful. And seeing how other people didn't do that and, and got to the same spot that I did, it makes me reflect on, you know, the choices that I made. And ultimately, I, ju I just think about like legacies and impact and inspiration and stuff that, you know, sparked an interest for me to, to pursue this, right? I saw Will I Am make some stuff and go in the breakfast club and share it with people that stuck with me and for sticking with me that that i went down that path to try to figure out how i could do that myself and i figured it out and but there was that reference point that i had and that was something that i that i picked up from football right like you go to practice you work out you do all those different things and if you're good you go to the league right you spend the time to get good when you get good you go to the league you know that was that was it was a clear pathway you know you got to go to college for two years got to go to college for three years or whatever so i needed to go to college to go to the league i did that didn't make it to the league because there's so many other things that go into that right you know but uh but it, it's 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 difficult right like it, it's it's really difficult to navigate this space when you're trying to you know right the wrongs of the past and then also paved the way for the future and and when those sort of conflict it's 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 rough right many times i think okay i have to i have to leave the blackness at the door so that i could go into do this ar stuff and for this project it was like in order for us to do the ar stuff we have to we have to bring the blackness with us and have to have it drive us and that's what we did and we ran into the pitfalls and the hurdles because of that and at the end of the day like we made it to the finish line and when it dropped it dropped and now it's literally on the side of a big building you know a bright you know piece of artwork you know shout out to mundo for for creating the artwork and all that like piece of artwork and that artwork comes to life and it and, it, and it's now it's a part of it's a part of the community and it's i'm forever grateful for that because that that's something that people it'll it'll outlive me you know it'll outlive us and it'll be there forever hopefully right like hopefully it stays and uh and it'll be there for a reason that that's that's the idea of blackness in in these spaces you know you you go to a space and, and you're connected in a way that you didn't think you would be and you can be inspired to it and so like literally like that that thing that project existing and being in that location where it is in the area that it is knowing the history of portland and black communities and how sei has sort of paved the way to sort of right those wrongs that is a beacon of hope because not only it doesn't look to the past but it looks to the for to the future of what people can do if they come together and they they stay authentic to themselves you know and uh and it, i'm just really proud of the work that like I did with the team i'm proud of the stuff that happened and you know i'm proud of the things that we were able to overcome and it was a great learning experience because without it i would have never i would have never you know done done a project like this and i i want to and and it, it's it, i think it it really speaks to the work that i i set out to do and i'm just really proud of it yeah just really proud so again thanks for watching Thanks for checking me out on the podcast. If you're listening on the podcast, check out PDX Black Rose. Check out Black Super Hills Matter. Check out Stucky in Augmented Reality. Check out Stuck on an Island. Man, you know, so many different projects that I'm working on. Uh, check me out at the Future of Everything Festival. That, that's going to be happening soon. Uh, check me out on uh, Patreon if you want to support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Illtopia. And if you want to get the merch from Illtopia Studios, uh, all handmade stuff by me, go to shop.illtopia.com. And so again, my name is Steve, moving and shaking in the world, and uh, thank you for the time.
Community is always the focus at Self Enhancement, or SEI, in North Portland. We wanted to create opportunities for black vendors to come and sell their goods and be in front of the community again. In February, the emphasis is on Black History Month. This Saturday, just like last weekend, SEI will hold an outdoor market in the parking lot. Live music, food, precautions, and a place for black-owned businesses to get some exposure. Ebeth Hernandez is SEI's special events specialist. We actually also have on our website a black business directory, and you can support them by purchasing online directly from those vendors if you aren't able to come to the market. Produce Portland is one of the vendors. And especially during COVID, without any events really going on, these kind of marketplaces help a lot just because most young entrepreneurs, the only place they can sell their product is at events or pop-ups. Along with the support for businesses, they've unveiled a project meant to inspire. I know I didn't like history when I was in school and I wonder why and it's not because, um, it's because I didn't learn the things about like the people that uh, relate to me. You know, we're talking about highlighting black inventors that innovated during their time. And so what better way to pay homage to them than to innovate with storytelling? Local artists Edmund Holmes and Stephen Christian were part of the team behind a comic book style mural called Invent the Future. It's a tribute to black inventors and their contributions, but it's not just a mural. It was really being able to bring the mural to life with animation, with sound, uh, and really uh, enhancing the experience that you would have with the mural with digital technology. With an Instagram filter, augmented reality brings the pictures to life. What about Lewis Latimer? It's important that we tell the right history and we celebrate the people who should be celebrated because they're often left out of history books. They're not taught about in schools. And so just being able to come up with an idea from your imagination, pursue it, and then have that manifest and inspire others, I mean, that, that's just what Invent the Future means. It's like we're literally creating the future that we want to see in the world. For these guys, for these businesses, the hope is to foster the conversation through art and through community to motivate the next generation of history makers. That every child has a gift. And so if we can, through our gifts, expose students to something new that they've never tried before and help them find their gifts, we will have accomplished what we set out to do. Yo, 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 this is Steve from Stuck on an Island. I definitely appreciate you taking the time to check out my work. Follow me on all the social nets. Be sure to check out my studio, Illtopia, on all the other platforms. And if you want to get some merch, check out shop.illtopia.com. <laughs>